the patterns, as you said. Um, starting out knowing nothing about what you're looking for, maybe, or, or maybe you have an idea what you're looking for, but you're, you're, you're trying to discover ways of finding it because it's not, you know, open shop. Like that. That, that, sounds, that sounds like a challenge. I mean, just, just, just getting to a point where I can learn something meaningful about my network from, from uh, cause, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the IT side of the, of the, of the family in, in our company, so I'm, I'm, you know, you know. Actually, the Wireshark program is really. Learn something about networks and nothing else, yeah. It's really cool how it works. And what it will do, it actually, its main purpose in life is to do this uh, breakdown, you know, and, and discrimination, that they call it dissectors. But um, it will dissect the, the raw data into every intimate detail you ever want to know about communication. So, and, it, and it's all tree structure. So every frame will be broken down into a subsequent layer, like in the old size of another model. It will break, break them all down and each field, each bit, everything's all enunciated, uh, enumerated, enunciated, explained in, in gory detail. Hmm. And, you know, the tool itself, that's what the tool does. I mean, you, you put this thing on, you snag this data, and boom, you get, gather yourself up. And I actually, and it's all open source. So I actually, you know, took and modified Wireshark to do this for us. And and personally, I would go through this Wireshark myself. The other guy, the, the scientist who actually designed all this stuff, he didn't like that. He wanted to look at the just raw data patterns. And he's the guy who worked for the Python stuff. So I'd look at it from a from a Wireshark perspective. Like I said, I, I modified Wireshark, and we will eventually be uploading this to back to the open source once our product is officially released in the market. Right now it's proprietary, but as soon as we release it, we'll, we're going we're gonna to make this available. So, so someday in the future, you'll, you'll download this from, you know, from Wireshark and see it. Here's, 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 a, here's, a, here's a, like at home, I've heard that if you put the right kind of monitoring tool on your home uh, internet router, you can, de you can detect all the, all the, all the, uh, all the Trojan attacks that are trying to get through your router. Well, you know, it's funny. When I was in here just, a, just you know, earlier today, yeah. my semantic came up, and, and I think it even said TCP attack pattern 0x5559, whatever, was detected shutting down this IP address. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. That's, like, that's, why my, that's why I turned my laptop off. Okay, so, so, so can, can Wireshark do that? Can it? Can it can it report to you what's uh, coming on, what's hitting the other side of your router? You have to be on the router. Yeah, it would have to be on the router. Yeah, it has. To, I mean, you have to be able. It's 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 a promiscuous uh, tap. Okay. You, you know, whatever you know, whatever you're able to physically see on the wire, okay. it, it's able to consume and okay. well, diagnose. I just I I. I, I I would suggest we we leave it at just saying you know in your in your spare time, your abundance of spare time um, for next month, play around with Wireshark and see you know find some application for the data or you're doing something with the data that you can get out of Wireshark. And actually, what I can do to help a little bit, I can send out the format what's called a WinPCAP, the WinPCAP format. That's the Structure that's those stuff is stored. Well, at least that's the, that's the most common option that's stored in. Yeah, if you do that, that'll that'll, that'll help. Send, send it to me. You got my email address, and I'll, I'll make it's sure. A, it's, a very, <coughs> it's a very simple. We'll forward. We'll, we'll send. We'll send a. We'll send a, 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 an email out to everybody that's on our F Sharp group mailing list. There's 30 or more. There might Close. be a WinPCAP. Somewhere type around 50 provider. people that we still have on our mailing list. There could be a there could be a type provider for that. Well, if there's not, we can. I mean, Win, WinPCAP is very very. I mean, it is. I mean. So let's let's pursue that. Let's right. pursue that. And I don't know what we'll actually have to talk about next month, but we'll we'll come back with something. Okay. I mean, what have you talked about? <laughs> what is it? Win P. Cap. Win P. Yeah. No, Ed. Just so you know, um, one of my friends, Scott, he used to work for NASA, administering lots of servers for him um, here in Ohio. Now he works for Red Hat, and he had he was a sysadmin, so he had naturally had to process a lot of log files on Linux. So we both belong to Akron Linux user group, so that's how I know him. Um, he wrote command line utils to actually do ASCII art, like you know, 
So no, normally your charting tools they require a GUI. So if you're on Windows, you need a GUI. He transposed that uh, just like command line. Uh, show it to me on the command line. I want I'm you know searching for this, that, and the other. You know amongst these billions of uh, plain text log files. Show it to me. See, chart it for me on the command line itself. And he's released that code base for free as well. So you're, you're, you know, I can uh, send you the details of it. You can, you know, see if that is applicable to your domain. Okay. See if, uh, you know, you can get any use use out of it. So you're, you're, you're pretty, you're pretty open source uh, savvy, yeah. right? You, mm -hmm. can, you can get things on GitHub and... Yeah, it will, yeah. yeah. So I think we should have a repo, F-sharp repo for the group where people can, you know, pull from and... Push into. All right, let's let's talk about that. Let's, let's, how, how many people here use GitHub? More than I thought. Yep. Is that hand going up, Mike? You are. I have a GitHub account. Yep. I have a GitHub account. I have not, I, 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 I've never actually uh, posted anything to my account yet, but I, I do have an account. One of the things I've been meaning to learn. Uh, I've always posted things in Code Project. What's that? I've only posted anything to Code Project. Have you? I posted F sharp snippets. <laughs> oh, there's a back to discriminating unions. FSSnip.com? Snippets, yeah. FSSnip, they um, bunch of sh snippets. There's one that uses extensive use of discriminating unions to do an HTML document. So, like, cool. it actually, you know, like HTML helpers in ASP.NET it's a bit that very similar kind of thing just to kind of demonstrate tech providers, or not tech providers, discriminating unions. I wanted to tell you about that. There was a um, check it out. Um, something we were talking about last night. Um, you know, if, if we wanted to work on something till next time, um, and you know, weren't ready to take on a network thing, um, scoring poker hands is actually, you know, it's, it's more of a practice exercise, <laughs> right? But um, there's actually some some challenges buried in there. Uh, Doing it functionally with F sharp, uh, you know, could be a good exercise. So, I don't know if anybody would um, be interested in looking at something like that as well, or some other time. I think it's a good idea. I think more hands-on kind of stuff would just be fun. Also, um, F sharp isn't the only language that I am familiar with. You know, like functional languages. My first interaction was with a with a software called Pandoc. It's a software written in Haskell by a professor or you know an academic in California. Again, released for free on the internet. And what it is is it's a beautiful piece of software that converts um, between formats, you know, document formats. It's kind of like a multi in your mind. See, it's a multiplexer of documents. You can go from Markdown to Word doc to PDF. You know, so docx to again HTML. So it's like this one piece of functional software that sits in the middle. You can hit it. You can you can hit it with any format you want, and you can go to any format you want. It's just absolutely massive and amazing. So that was my first program that I discovered through my own exercise because I was on Linux a lot, and I used to write Markdown, you know, for uh, notes and you know this that and the other. So uh, for invoicing, I actually wrote like an invoicing, you know, so I would write my invoices in plain text, use Pandoc to actually format it as a PDF, give it to my customers. There you go. Mm -hmm. See, and I didn't require Adobe Acrobat, for example, to do, to do my work. Mm -hmm. So that was my first exam, first. And then I learned that, you know, Eric Meyer, you know, he's now at Microsoft. Actually, you know, actually now he's not at Microsoft. Well, I, I guess he's like, you know, he's a, he's, he's, a re he's a researcher. You know, and he, it's his contributions, you know, to the language that you're witnessing here firsthand. So for, I'm pretty interested in the, in, you know, how the languages are developed as well. So that's why it kind of led me to that. And then that's how F Sharp happened. Yeah, so you, you're saying before that you didn't, you didn't have a computer science background. I, I don't either. I mean, I've got, you know, electrical engineering background. And, you know, I, I, I consider myself much more software than I am hardware. But, you know, my, my real day job is, I don't get a chance to do you know, fun, fancy software. It's, it's, 
I'm, I'm down in the nanosecond world of ASIC gates and. Are you, are you and, a member of Fennel? Fe coded stuff. To, and see, you know, how many, you know, you know, what's faster? Do we go over this cache line? Do we invalidate this cache? Do we, you know, what's this data structure look like? And if we do this C++ class, what's the V table like? And does it cross cache lines? And you know, looking at all these, you know, so it's a, it's a, you know, it's a different, different world. But, but I also, but again, I also have done. You know, back when I was in R and D, you know, I had much more fun back then doing, you know, artificial intelligence and co-op and stuff, fuzzy logic. Now, you now I'm back into you know, deep, deep core. Um, so, you know, design. so, so are you a member of FENEO then? I imagine uh, firmware engineers of Northeast mm -hmm. Ohio. Yeah. All right, awesome. But were you there for Dan Sachs' talk uh, on C plus plus for embedded at the uh, Lake Park Frontier? No, airport? but I mean, I, I, okay. I do that stuff. Well, okay, talk. yeah. So you know. He, he he was pitching C++ for, you know, embedded software. So that was my first, uh, you know, and... Oh, yeah, we, we do... Yeah. We do um, probably 90% of our stuff is C++ embedded. Cool. But it's a, you know, but it, you, you have to write it... You have to be consciously um, aware... Aware of, of the... Of yeah. what it's generating. Because we, yeah. we look at, you know, we look at stuff as you know, how many microseconds does it take for this function to execute? Right. You know, if it's, it's 10 microseconds, great. If it's 30 microseconds, I don't know. We might want to rethink that. <laughs> you know? Yep. Yep. That kind of stuff. Cool. Very neat. All right. Well, you make stuff that makes go. the world go round. What's that? You make stuff that makes the world go world go round. Quite literally. Yeah, it doesn't sound boring to me, but then I haven't been you know, doing it day after day for as long as you have. All right. Thanks to uh, G for the yep. photography and sound and uh, yep. we'll publicity. Meet so again. We're going to be hearing from people all over the world, I'm sure, uh, in no time flat. And uh, thanks to all you guys, and we'll see you all next month. Cool. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.